Hello, I'm Beth Kallmeyer and I'm Vice President of Care and Support at the Alzheimer's Association. I'm excited to be here today for this special opportunity to speak about a new film entitled The Artist's Wife. Joining me is the film's director and screenwriter, Tom Dolby, whose family has long worked to advance dementia science through their support of the Alzheimer's Association International Research Grant Program and its Part the Cloud competitions in honor of his father, Ray Dolby, and all those impacted by Alzheimer's and other dementias. Also joining us is Academy Award nominated actress, Lena Olin, who plays Claire in the film. Lena's character is the wife and caregiver of a famed artist who's played by Bruce Dern and whose character is diagnosed with dementia. Tom and Lena, it's such a pleasure to be with you here today. Let's dive right in. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. So Tom, I know that your father passed away from Alzheimer's disease. And so I'm, I'm interested in understanding how your family's experience with Alzheimer's really informed and inspired this film. It absolutely did inform and inspire the film. I, I really, I saw what my father was going through, but I also really saw what my mother and my brother were going through and, and what I was experiencing as well. And and just what that process is like for a family and how it's a disease that is it's not about one person, it's about all, all the people around that it really affects the entire family unit. And so I, I wanted to explore that in the film. And there were definitely certain, uh, certain experiences that, uh, that inspired some scenes, some scenes in the film. And, and you know, then we, the wonderful thing of writing something like this is you get to then take it in sort of in a fictional direction and, and create this whole other world. So one of the things, um, with this film, we've had other Alzheimer's films, but generally they've been through the lens of the person living with the disease or living with dementia. But this film really focused on caregivers. Um, can you talk about why you made that the focus of this film? Yeah, I, I just, I really hadn't seen a film like this. And um, to me, it was also, it was exciting to do something from the female perspective. I, I think that that perspective is so often ignored. Um, we see so few portrayals of, of long-term marriages with older couples um, portrayed on film in sort of a, in a realistic, loving, but, but funny and dramatic sort of way. And so I really, I wanted to do that. And, um, and I knew I had, a, I had a wonderful actress who could fulfill that, uh, that role for us. <laughs> well, speaking of the wonderful actress, uh, uh, Lena, what, what was it about this film that, or this role that really inspired you and wanted you to, to participate in the project? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I think it was the, the, the way what Tom has talk, talked about, the fact that it's his life, it's his family's pain, his own pain, that he put on the page. And I think that's so crucial. Uh, when you read a script and you, you have someone's beating heart on every single page, it, it, it moves you. And uh, I also thought it was so interesting to see someone the way Claire has, she has sort of, she opted out from her own career, her own desires, her own creativity, if you will. And I think that comes so easily for, for, for women, uh, for some people, but it's, it's mostly women who have that kind of talent or, or, or who easily, without even no, noticing. And I think that's something that I think a lot of people can relate to, that life goes on and you discover that given up so much or I haven't focused on anything that's really mine. I think that's what happens. That's what certainly happened with Claire and Richard, that their marriage, which I think is a fantastic marriage in many ways has also in that marriage, Claire has disappeared in many ways. Mm. And I think it's interesting how this catastrophe, this tragedy suddenly gets her in touch with, her creativity and who she is and what she wants. And, and I think that that's also very relatable that sometimes when life forces us to look at ourselves or do things that we normally wouldn't have done or take new steps, I think that's, that's interesting and inspiring. Yeah, I think one of the things about the film that really resonated with me was the relationship between 
Richard and Claire and how the disease impacted that. Data set it's been written about. I'll be ready, honey. I always pull it together. You know that. I got some sketches here and I can't find them. They're in a little notebook. What kind of notebook? A notebook with all my personal things in them. And how can I trust you with all of my personal things if you lose them? What are you talking about? It's my very important things, okay? Why am I explaining to you? I was talking about the show, Richard. I've had it with the show. Don't mention it anymore. It's not your job. My job? My job? So they had this, these many, many years of interacting together and they had this wonderful marriage and then this disease came along and the complexity of her feelings and her anger at him for normal things, right? Mm -hmm. He buys a wildly expensive clock for no reason. He can't make a bowl of cereal. Those are things that everybody gets angry at and that's mm -hmm. normal. Except when you've got dementia in the picture, then you have somebody the, the caregiver's angry and then she gets angry at herself because mm -hmm. she realizes that he doesn't understand what's going on and that they can't interact the way they used to. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in hearing more about what, what were your thoughts in those moments as you were, as you were filming the, those scenes. Uh, uh, I think it's very relatable. It's so, it's so easy to be generous and kind and, and think about the person who is sick when you're not, needing them the way Claire needs Richard. I think it's often that we judge people for being cruel or short-tempered with people who obviously have a problem. Dep I mean, regardless of what problem it is, when you're mm -hmm. close to the problem, I think it's easy to get impatient and, and, you know, her whole life is falling apart. Richard's too, and he's the one who's sick, but she, her life is falling apart completely and she has no one because Richard and her have been best friends and they've shared a life for, for decades. So I think it's very natural. And I think that was very real the way Tom wrote it, that it didn't feel, because sometimes when we see a film about something like this, it's like, but where's the marriage? What was the marriage anyway? Was it just two old people and one of them gets sick? Whereas you, I, I felt on the page and I, I, hopefully we managed to put it on the screen too, you felt the marriage, you felt two people that had been in love and that were still in love and that had like a real marriage and real joy and real annoyed with each other and re all of those real things, which I think was so important because it's not like Alzheimer hits and it's people who their whole life has been <laughs> preparing to get Alzheimer and then you get it and then you deal with it. It's like, yeah. it's like the whole life, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the reality is Alzheimer's isn't linear. You know, the way that it plays out, some days, some days the person can do things and interact in a certain way, and then some days they can't. So it, it really um, plays a number, if you will, on the caregiver because you can't sort of prepare. You can't just say, okay, now this is how I'm going to deal with this. Yeah. You have to constantly be interacting. That's a great point. There was, I have this sort of private theory that I was always thinking about when, when filming the movie is that you have this, you have, Richard has dementia, but I think that the experience of being a caregiver, especially in the early stages, it's not exactly like dementia, but the way it affects you emotionally, the way it turns all your expectations upside down, suddenly the spouse who you thought you knew is a totally different person, I think that's just as disorienting to one's sense of self and sense of reality as dementia in different ways, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not literally losing your mind, but like you, it just, I think that is, it's a complete, you know, world shift. And it's like, like Lena said, you don't spend, you don't spend your whole life, you know, preparing for this to happen. It just strikes you, you know, it's, it strikes you so unexpectedly. And I think that is so, so disorienting. Um, and so we really, we really wanted to show that. And I, and I hope to show people that they're, they're not alone in this struggle because um, it's, it's a tough one and it, and it feels very lonely, I think, especially in the beginning when you're still learning about it. And I can tell you that um, those early stages of the disease, caregivers are even less likely to reach out for help then because in their minds, if they have any sense, if they've had Alzheimer's disease with other folks in their family or whatever, they know that things are gonna get worse. 
so they think, oh, I, I need, I'll need help later when, when they need more physical help and things of that nature. But in those early stages when the relationship is thrown upside down because the person isn't holding up their end of the bargain, their role in the relationship isn't the same, uh, that's a really hard time when I talk to caregivers to get them to think, now's the time to start talking about some of this so that you can perhaps navigate it a little better. And, and as you said, Tom, understand that you're not alone. This is a really challenging uh, disease and it's important to, to connect with other people. But in the end, I think it's about how comfortable people are. And one of the things that we do at the Alzheimer's Association when we talk to caregivers on the helpline is to say, who are you talking to? You know, and of course, there's support groups and we have education programs, but who in your family is being supportive of you? Who's going to be the care team? You know, in the film, right, Claire reaches out to Richard's daughter and they were estranged. But she knew that she needed somebody, you know, and she felt like family, I think, was she didn't want to go outside of the family, perhaps, and she wasn't comfortable with that, which is also common. But she reached out, she reached out to Richard's daughter because she needed someone too. And, and she wanted to heal their relationship, I think. But um, yeah, Lena, do you want to talk about what, what your thoughts were on, on, on Claire's motivation for reaching out to the daughter? I think exactly what you're saying, that she obviously is aware that she needs someone. She needs help. She needs help to help him. And I think it's the weird that we all have. And I think it's a plague that we're so ashamed. We're ashamed certainly of Alzheimer. There's so many sides of life and being human that, that we're ashamed of. Uh, just being different in, you know, mental health is like a huge shameful thing that we wouldn't. And I think, and I really love the way it was written, uh, the scene in the doctor's office when the doctor tries to, to tell Claire that she needs help. She needs to reach out. And she's like, I would never do that to Richard. I would never let. And then everyone becomes an enemy. I would never let a bunch of strangers judge him or... And I think that is crippling, extremely crippling for the sick person, of course, but also for the caregiver and the whole family, the, the everyone involved. It would be so much better if we could get the stigma off so many things where, uh, and I think also with Alzheimer's or any kind of mental or uh, when you really are not sure that the person has his judgment or her judgment 100%, because if it's cancer, you can discuss it with your partner and say, do we want to say to the world that you have whatever kind of cancer or any other kind of physical disease? But with mental disease, it's very hard to know whether you're betraying the person you love or if you're doing what, because you can't really know where they're at to discuss it with them. And I think I really loved the way Tom had written it, that she becomes so, almost furious with the doctor. What are you suggesting that I would start babbling about how awfully sick he is? And I really like that because I think it's very, it's very human and it's very normal that people react that way. And I don't know, I think we need to do everything we can in society not to put shame on so many things. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. And I think that when, when families are able to talk about it, you know, when, when, when Claire reached out and you could see in the film that it got a little lighter for her. Mm -hmm. you know, she, she, it got lighter for her when, when Richard's daughter was engaged and she found a place for herself to take care of herself, right? She started painting and she did that for herself. And one of the things we tell caregivers all the time is you have to find something for yourself. You have mm. to take care of yourself. And they mm. think, well, I don't want anyone else coming in and taking mm. care of them. And yeah. I don't, I'm going to be the best at that, right? But the reality is, especially with a disease like this, if they don't bring someone in, they're going to get sick. You know, what happens to them? What kind of caregiver could somebody be if they're angry and upset and depressed? Mm. But having another outlet like a painter or taking a walk with a friend or playing bridge or going out to lunch. Um, those things are hard. You really have to encourage the, the caregiver to step away uh, mm. to take care of themselves. It's mm. true. Tom, yeah. did you have that experience with your, with your own mom? Was she someone that was hard to, uh, to get her? To... 
Yeah, she definitely had a, there was a, a journey for her in terms of feeling comfortable admitting it to herself and then telling me and my brother um, and then starting to gradually tell, tell people who were close around us. Um, and, you know, there are just these stages and, you know, we use these euphemisms sort of that are like, oh, he's, you know, he's not been himself these days or a little bit of senility is coming along. And we use these things as crutches and, and maybe they're sort of necessary crutches you know, to help get us through, that's certainly better than saying, oh, nothing is wrong at all, you know, um, it, because, yeah, it, it is, it is, like Lena said, it's, it's crippling to, to hold these, these secrets, you know, and I think, I know for my mom, the support group was so important, and so, you know, it was totally anonymous, totally confidential, and she was meeting once a week with people she might not have met in her daily life, and finding so many of the same experiences happening, to them and I you know I feel like as Claire's story continues she I always imagine it you know her she would go to support groups she would <laughs> find out you know oh you know yes my husband also put orange juice in the cereal yeah. or did some other thing that made no sense you know the carton of milk into the cupboard and not into the refrigerator you know because these things are so common but when at this when it happens to you at first you're thinking oh god this is so embarrassing I mean, I love how how Claire cleans up the kitchen because she doesn't want the housekeeper to see the mess. And the housekeeper is probably the person who knows them the most, you know, and isn't going to be surprised by that situation at all. Um, I'm mean, I'm curious, Lena, because that was such a, a dramatic scene. What mm. was how was that play? And and especially with Bruce, you, the, mm. sparks, the sparks were flying, and not good sparks. <laughs> no, that was you know the shock and the. The when it's 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 they can't. I think the some this is impossible. It can't be that we've you know to have your spouse that you've trusted and looked up to and people obviously in life make mistakes and but when they start acting that way, the the fury, the the shame, and how this is this is not this is not happening, and I think that's where Claire was at. Uh, that it's that it's shocking and shameful and, and, and the denial, she's like, this is, this is insane. Yeah, and the, the denial is something that we see time mm. and time again, you know, mm. because it's a complicated disease to recognize, it's a complicated disease to diagnose. And of course, we're getting closer, we're getting to a place where we're gonna be able to have that blood test one day so mm. that it's, it's less complicated. And, and I think that will help. And then that will lead to treatments, of course, that will also help. You know, if you think about cancer in the 50s that people used to whisper about the diagnosis, right? Yeah. They didn't say it out loud. Mm. But now it's different. And, you know, maybe not for everybody, but for many, many people now, there's no stigma around saying I have a medical disease. Cancer is a medical disease. So is Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and one day in talking about it and in lifting it up in, in films and in, in, in the public eye and helping people understand that it is a disease. It is nothing to be ashamed of. The brain is part of our body and it is a disease of the brain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it, it is. It's interesting because we do, yeah, we, we touch on, yeah, the connection with family, the seeking out of support. And I think really the love, I mean, Lena, you've had such interesting things to say in different Q&As about the love between them and, and the idea of sacrifice, the word sacrifice. Because um, I, I just love, I feel like Claire at the end is so, she's so committed, but she is also very much her own person. Mm -hmm. And she does not see this as a sacrifice. She does not see this as a burden. She sees this as this is the man she loves and she's going to support him to the end. Mm -hmm. When you love somebody the way she loves him, to be able to do something that actually makes such a huge difference for him is just, is terribly, is, is extremely rewarding. And I think that when we act out of love, we do it and it's not even, it's not a sacrifice in the same way that you, you give something up, you gain something instead. And uh, I think that's what Claire is at. She gains so much and she's gained back her creativity. So she won't stop probably, right. and, uh, but she's gaining so much by being able to make him happy. 
And another, another aspect that I thought was really helpful when we talk with lots of families and you know what? Families are complicated. So you don't just get, you don't just face the disease and, and all of a sudden become a, a, a healthy and functioning unit, right? We all bring years and years of uh, stuff to the table. So what I thought was really great in the film and it helped and it is helpful for families was um, when Richard's daughter brought the grandson because the fa bringing the grandson was such a great buffer and those were some great scenes. Uh, and children can take in so much. You know, sometimes families worry about how do I explain Alzheimer's and what grandpa might be doing? But the reality is the world's new to children. Everything's new to them. They just take it in and they can just be present in the moment, which is what is so critical sometimes for people living with dementia. I love what you said, Beth, about, about the, the connection with children because it is, it is such a simple, pure connection. And you see that with him bonding with his grandson, you know, the morning after, after the Christmas gathering. And I mean, to me, it's just such a simple, sweet scene. And a child is not, is not going to judge, you know, and I, I think you're absolutely right. The whole world is so new, is so new to children. You know, it's I, children and, and animals, dogs, <laughs> dogs are, dogs are also incredible. We had everything in the movie except for a dog. <laughs> and, um, but no, that little boy was just such a such a healing force. I think both for Claire and for Richard. And I mean, Claire has you know you have that beautiful scene with him when you first meet him, and you mm. connect with him and show him yeah. how to draw. And mm. I just love that scene. It's absolutely it's this it's it's very sweet but very real. In mm. you see her pain coming through, and you do see him absorbing it just a little bit, even if he doesn't understand it. And mm -hmm. just giving giving her some of that sort of unconditional love, which is was so lovely. I think the other thing that you see in the film, certainly, and it, and I see this happen in families. Did you see what the child did to Richard? It allowed him to have some peace in the moment. He could react in the present with him, and he mm -hmm. was calmer in that moment. It was just a moment, right? But he mm -hmm. had those moments where, when he was interacting with them, he could smile. That was the first time I remember in the film that he smiled, really. Mm -hmm. And th there's something to be said for what we bring as caregivers to the relationship. So we bring all of our own angst and our anger and our fear and our concern about the future and all of that. And if we can somehow find a way to let some of that go and be super present in the moment, it's gonna be, it's gonna make for a better, the person living with the disease is gonna have a better experience and together we're gonna have a better experience. Mm -hmm. But it's so challenging to get to talk to caregivers about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we, we certainly hope the film, in, as people see the film, will illuminate some of those experiences and, you know, give them a little, a little window on it and, and, and they'll see that, you know, they're not alone in this experience. Yeah, I think, I, I, I hope so too. I, I think films like this can really lift up some of those challenging issues and, and families can see themselves in it and, and perhaps see um, that reaching out for help uh, even from an estranged family member, uh, can have a, a, a good outcome and can make a difference for that family. We're happy to share the film. It was really well done. I encourage, I encourage folks to, uh, to watch the film, and I want to thank you both for, for joining me today in this conversation. I think it's been wonderful and really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having us.